is why did I start to research gender dysphoria? Um, you know, I've talked about this previously, but I noticed in my own community around 2014 that one after the next teenager was starting to identify as transgender and in numbers much greater than I would expect to see. And these kids turned out to be all from the same friendship group. And so that didn't make sense given what we know about gender dysphoria. Next, I reviewed the scientific literature, finding that, you know, what I'm seeing does not, is not explained by the scientific literature at that point. I reviewed the social media on the topic. I found that teenagers were asking about symptoms and experiences and saying, does this mean I'm trans? They were being told yes, and you should transition right away. Um, and there was a lot of information on social media about how to trick your doctors to get hormones, how to uh, you know, trick your parents to get you there. And then I searched online to see if anybody else was reporting this. Um, okay, so globally, there was a lot going on. Starting in 2015 is when um, gender, gender clinics, specialty gender clinics in Canada and the Netherlands um, started to publish about their patient demographics. Um, and they noticed that maybe starting in the mid, mid 2000s, um, that there was an uptick and a really, really pronounced increase in teenagers seeking care and an even sharper increase in female, te female teens seeking care. So much so that the sex ratio switched from a population that was um, predominantly male to one that was predominantly female. Um, it, around this time, there started to be um, recognition of a new type of presentation of gender dysphoria that pr prior to 2012, um, late onset gender dysphoria in natal females was um, relatively absent from the scientific literature. And so this started to be um, observed and observed more and more. Um, research coming out of the clinics in Finland and also the United Kingdom showed that um, teen seeking care had higher psychological and developmental problems. Um, in Finland, they describe perhaps there are additional pathways based on based on what they are seeing in their in their patients. And so there has been a tremendous change in the demographics and presentations of patients that occurred rather recently. So why? Why are these changes happening? And so some of the the authors of, of the research documenting these change changes um, suggested some explanations. So um, could this be decreased stigma, increased visibility and information? And sure, those things would definitely explain increase in numbers, but it doesn't explain why teens in particular, why there's been a change in the sex ratio and why there is this new presentation, late onset gender dysphoria in natal females. Um, another proposed explanation is maybe there are sex-based differences in stigma. So if it's harder for males to come out as trans than females, you would see an increase um, in females. But this doesn't explain why there's a new presentation, um, why this change in sex ratio was not seen for adults. This seems to be something that is occurring in young people. And so this has really not been researched yet, even though some people will dig in their heels and say, oh, it is definitely stigma, increased visibility and information and absolutely nothing else. Um, that's really an overstatement because we don't know yet. And so given that we don't have an explanation that describes all of these changes um, and with such big changes, it really could be many different factors contributing to this. Um, why explore psychosocial factors? So uh, um, Stella um, had already mentioned social contagion, peer contagion. Uh, humans are susceptible to being influenced by, by other human beings in a, in a variety of ways. Um, adolescents are particularly susceptible to peer influence. Um, and because the driving force of these changes are adolescents seeking care, um, I think it's important to explore this. There are differences in for peer, contag peer contagion. Female teens are more susceptible to anxiety, depression, disordered eating, and body image issues, while male teens are more susceptible to risk-taking behaviors. Um, 
Another thing is the pattern of distribution, clusters of individuals um, announcing a trans identity, um, the social media content and the can, content and the dynamics, and the psychological issues. Um, basically, it would have been irresponsible. I'm sorry. Basically, it would have been irresponsible not to explore psychosocial factors 